Well, hello there, and welcome to a, another On the Couch this evening. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, and for well, the, hello there, and welcome to a, for those joining the us at evening. a different um, time. Thank you for joining us. Um, and for the, hello there. One second. There we go. I think that'll fix it up. Um, for those joining us a different time zone, 7.30, uh, those in Sydney, um, and anyone with daylight savings time. So something a little bit different than what we're normally used to. Um, but for those joining us at 6.30 and 7.30, my name's Jackson, and we'll be having an, a great discussion uh, tonight on the couch with um, a superstar of the content creator game. We've got Ben Lee uh, um, at each barn for anyone that does follow any of the social channels as well. So before I bring him in, this is a man who has done campaigns with Samsung, Adobe, SanDisk, Adidas, Mercedes, DJI, Lexus as well, I think as well. So he's done a, a fantastic job uh, throughout his reels and Instagram stories and TikTok. So if you want to learn anything in that sort of scope tonight, tonight is going to be a great occasion for it. But before uh, before anything else, let's bring in the man himself, Ben Lee. Ben. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the intro, man. I've never been called a superstar. <laughs> it's the first, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome, Ben. So tonight is going to be uh, special for us as well, obviously, to be able to learn a bit more about the content creator game. Um can you tell us about how you got started in doing content creation as such? Well, it started off with me buying a camera because I thought it looked cool. Uh, I wasn't into photography, but I saw a cool looking Leica and they, they were so expensive. So then the next thing I could afford was a, a Fuji. So I went and bought that and that kind of pushed me into photography. But currently I'm using a Canon R5 for those interested, but we'll talk more about gear in a bit. And yeah, Instagram came around. I started posting photos and it blew up. I was on a suggested user list. So that helped push my follow account and push me towards, I guess, like a social media startup, I guess. But that helped, uh, yeah, kind of sort my life out. Because before that, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I had just left the job and was kind of confused with the direction of my life, I guess. So photography saves my life i would say sounds a bit, a bit dramatic but mm. definitely the case mm. yeah awesome yeah we're just trying to get sorry ben to cut you off there we're just trying to get some audio stuff sorted are you on is your... uh, yeah i can hear myself so it's a bit hard yeah perfect uh, that's all good all fixed. Thank you, Angus. Hey, yes, hello. Sweet. Awesome. Now, now in your gear journey, so you started from a various few brands, obviously mm. Canon on the couch tonight, but that's okay. And we want to learn a bit about how you built your way up, I guess, in, in the game that you've done with lenses and bodies. What did you start on? How was your humble beginnings? Uh, well, my first, like I, I would say, proper camera that I actually went out and took photos with was a Canon ATD. I think I commandeered it for my dad and he didn't care. He wasn't using it, but I took a photo in Bombo actually, which Canon used as the Australia retail um, hero image. Yep. Uh, I don't think I have it with me tonight, but yeah, that was a pretty big deal. I had just yeah, started photography sure. and uh, I go into camera stores and you could see my photo like um, right there promoting the mm. ADD that I showed. Uh, yeah. The ATD, I think it was <laughs> nice. pretty crazy. And then like, Obviously, like as I got more savings and jobs, I would upgrade the body, upgrade the lenses. But yep. started off with a humble ADD, then went to a 6D, yep. and then a 5D3, and then a EOS R, and then an R5. So I've been through the whole entire range. Jeez, but nice. uh, currently streaming on an R5, which I'm super happy with. And yeah, I don't know what else I'd need from a camera. It does everything I need. Yeah, cool. And we sort of chatted a little bit about off air as well when we were talking about gear, um, and which we'll cover a bit more in a basis tonight. But yeah. you've kept quite a lot of your EF lineup of lenses as well, which has been a good transition for a brand. Um, I spoke to a bit about Colin um, last week as well, or mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and he said just 
even having the body, um, you don't exactly have to switch to the RF system as well, which is really cool. Yeah, like ideally I would have all RF lenses, right? But mm. I, I have one twenty four seventy, which I bought to replace a old uh, Sigma lens that it got too heavy. Sigma lenses yep. are pretty, like they're big, bulky and heavy, but sure. affordable. So yep. when I could afford the new one, I jumped to the new one and it might be only a few grams, but like when you're hiking and stuff, it makes a huge difference. But I I like all my lenses. My 85 1.4 is probably my favorite. It has mm -hmm. IS as well, which is perfect for video and photo, which yep. I'm a hybrid shooter. So that's skulls pretty much. A big part of what you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and we've, we've talked before, so um, obviously about the content creative game, but when did it start to click for you? Obviously, you've, you've had a, a pretty big campaign. Um, how, how, how have you built off the back of that, essentially? Uh, well, I started taking photos for fun, like everyone, right? But mm. I think I was lucky that I timed it right with Instagram. Um, Instagram started blowing up, and then all the brands were at that stage, it was like 2014. So they were unsure, but they yep. wanted to test it out. And like, there were mixed results with like uh, Instagram things going viral and everyone mm. wanting to be in on that platform. So yeah, sure. I think the first few things, I did a few things for free. Um, brands would send some stuff out. So I shot a bunch of uh, hoodie photos. I, okay. I think I reached out to, I liked a few of their photos and then they messaged me and they were like, hey, we'll send you some stuff, go shoot it. And I was like, mm. I think... Uh, I didn't get paid for those, but I think it's fine because I just wanted something to shoot and something to do pretty much. So yeah, I grabbed sure. it and then uh, forced a few of my friends uh, to model. <laughs> they, they've helped me out a lot. So it's not all just me. But um, from there, I would say my first kind of paid proper gig was Adidas, which is pretty surprising. So pretty, um, pretty huge. Yeah, pretty good, right? Uh, mm. I was shocked at the time too. Um, I went out and bought a 35 mil just for that shoot. It was my first lens that I bought outside of the kit lens. So yep. uh, it worked out well. Um, they got us to shoot the new, uh, they had, at the time, the new NMDs, which is pretty cool. Um, they gave us a pair too, which I still have and use to this day. But um, they also got me to shoot a bunch of uh, celebrities as well. So that was mm. me getting thrown into the deep end and uh, learning portrait photography pretty much at that time. But I think yeah, I did cool. pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. And I've talked to the, with a couple of um, guests that we've had on the couch and kind of like that trial by fire stage where you kind of <laughs> sign up for something pretty massive without really understanding it and just, you know, going hell for leather and, and it turns out to, to, to go beyond what you expected. Is that type of a situation where it was kind of like a sink or swim moment or? Yeah, there's been a lot of those uh, moments throughout my career. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice. I'm so I shot a campaign for James Bogues. So they sent me and a bunch of other photographers down there to just explore. And I think we were supplementing a campaign they're running. So we were yep. just capturing images of our style. Mm. And this was back in the day, like very, mm. there weren't any easy options for videos. So I had the 560 back then, which could do yep. 1080, I think. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to dabble in video. So then I was like, all right, I'm just going to film what I can. I don't even know what like, frame rates are i'm just gonna mm, do whatever and mm. then figure it out in the end sure. i shot a, a few clips of all the places we went to and i edited it to the video to a flume track i remember um nice. it's a little cringy now that i watch it but that was like the first kind of video that i started right and yeah, um, right. i put that out and because not many people were doing just kind of video at that level i was approached by canon actually and they asked me to capture vivid for them so that was my first mm. <laughs> a video Jeez. gig and yeah, okay. I think I I borrowed a 5D4 off them, I think, and I shot uh, with that. <laughs> Not bad uh, for a man that doesn't uh, know what uh, frame rates are doing at that point. Uh, by, then, by then, I'd figured out because like right. Tasmania, I didn't know how to use the, the program and I had to figure out like how to set up the sequence for, mm. for the editing. And then I learned all that. And by the time Canon hit me up, I was like, I know what frame rates are. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, shoot nice. in slow-mo. You can explain it all. 100%. Yeah, well, at that point, probably I could just wasn't conscious yet man <laughs> yeah but, nice man and and kind of like you're young a bit young and fearless as well at yeah. certain points as well which i i guess would help in that industry i think you just need to say yes but it's also important that you say yes and you have to try your best to not let them down so mm. i i did pretty well um it just kept on building to the next jobs and i shot a lot of personal things which also helped me get a lot of jobs too so 
there's I think shooting something that you want to shoot it's, it's like it helps you put more effort in because you're passionate about it like yeah, my first sure. personal video was probably like a Melbourne road trip and it was just me and the boys having fun so it was pretty mm. pretty easy to edit to I think it's um it's funny you say that because you kind of like I've watched your New Zealand uh, vlog which you've just oh, nice. put up on YouTube <laughs> about two three weeks ago and and even that was kind of just a, a fancier way of you know explaining what you did on the journey getting some really good shots so it was kind of like you've learned from what you've done at that very start but you're still applying a lot of those things to what you're doing now which is cool it's gotten a lot more complicated so mm. uh, I have a camera that can shoot all the video that I want to. So the R5 can do 4K 120, which thinking back on it, my new, my, sorry, my Tasmanian, the first video, I yep. couldn't even do slow-mo. The most I could go is 10, 10, 80, 30, mm. Which, mm. and then I could slow it down to like 90%. <laughs> so yeah. now I have something that can shoot 4K 120, which is pretty crazy. But you add on to that, the action cams and the drones, and like I just bought a 360 cam, but nice. it starts In to give you more nice. options and i'm pretty happy that i'm at that stage where i can i have enough gear i can use whatever i want but yep and i've seen in a couple of your earlier stuff as well i'm not sure if you're still using it but film photography has played a part as well is that something that was very early on for you and it's kind of just progressed or is that something you've added as another creative tool how's it worked that, that's more of my just like throwaway photos pretty much so if like mm -hmm. i'm at an epic location i'll just take out the film camera and snap a shot and yep. not put too much effort in but mm. i don't know if you can see right there's a i've been collecting them i have like five <laughs> eos film cameras now nice. one of them doesn't work but the thing with those ones right they're the later part of the film cameras from canon so they still work with the EF lenses and it has autofocus and everything. Nice. <laughs> so I've, I've got an EOS 3 at home as well, which works really well with uh, some of the lenses too. So, so Yeah, it's pretty, like I I shot, man, like, you know, those full DSLR cameras where everything's manual. It's like yep. trying to shoot street. I was like, I'm really bad at manual focusing. The guy's gone mm. already. Like, so <laughs> autofocus <laughs> helps a lot, but I haven't, I've shot maybe 15 rolls of film. It's so expensive now and it's yeah. all out of stock. So 100%. it's a side thing that's just uh, complementing my digital photography, I would say. Yeah, cool. Does that, do you find that, I mean, the most generic probably YouTube is going to say that it slows down the process so they can creatively think more about their photography. Do you find it's kind of yeah. a bit of that or? Yeah, like I think you take a whole bunch of photos and you don't remember them. I, like sometimes mm. I'll wait until I have like five or six rolls before I go develop them. And it's like, sure. it's a good surprise having them all like, oh, I remember exactly that moment. And I think uh, it's like a $30, $30 a roll and then plus developing. So it's like, yeah, yeah you, you slow down. <laughs> yeah, um, you're, you're spending a bloody fair bit each roll. Uh, I think it's like each shot, it's a couple of bucks right there. So you think, I, you think, you're thinking Shooting about street, it. I did shoot, I did shoot multiple frames because like I was, there was a shot I remember where a subject went and stood in like a slick of light and he was smoking. And yes, so it's like, I have seen is, that video as a reel. This That's is a really too nice good one. To, to let go. So I wanted to, with street photography, I think you need to get the right gesture, the right uh, everything. So I shot like yep. three frames there. So yeah, if it's worth it, I'll burst. It's whatever. And, I just... and you got some really good keepers out of that too. Like you made a whole video out of just that moment, yeah. which is pretty cool. I did a POV uh film photography thing in in uh tokyo so i think people especially with street photography they're either apprehensive to go shoot themselves or like they mm -hmm. they don't know i think these pov street videos really help yep. show how the situation was correct you can actually see the photo being taken and it's not that big of a deal most of the times yeah 100 percent um i'm not sure if you have any of those videos um to show but that would be a real good point because obviously that there was that tiktok that you recently posted um of uh, the girl yeah. on the train yeah so i posted a tiktok uh just to explain it to those mm. things it it was a collection of my street photos where the subject uh i guess they didn't catch me but they looked into the lens mm. so uh, it looks like I'm taking a street portrait where the subject's looking directly at you as for the photos. And yep. I burst photos a lot, but there was, I put on TikTok and I don't know if you guys have used TikTok, but sometimes when it goes viral, it'll just spread it to everyone. And mm. I guess 
non-photographers were like uh they had lots of things to say <laughs> basically yes yeah yeah so Ever. um it was a pretty big conversation but then like all the photo blogs and some other websites picked it up and they all shared it and it's been pretty yeah. well received i would say yeah definitely and i think it shows that there's more to just the final image right we're always yeah. telling story as photographers and we're telling our own story that we choose to, to share but I think what's important as well is for the people that aren't there to show exactly what has transpired um, in in that photo uh, making process, which is cool. Like I, for me, street photography, I like that there's a story and the viewer more mm. or less makes the story up in their head. If if it looks obvious, sometimes yep. it's not what it seems. So like there was a photo of a lady. Um, I was in London in the tube. I was yep. first. I was shooting uh, just. A, a man reading a book this is a nice frame i guess nothing special <laughs> but then yep. i looked past him and i saw a lady standing right at the door and the door was open and the wind was blowing a hail all over the place so yep. i burst a, a bunch of photos and it took maybe like a second maybe 10 photos and the frame that i chose to post she i guess can be interpreted that she looks mad she's not actually mad she's uh, mm. smirking almost but it's like that millisecond before she smirked and uh, a lot of people in the comments like, oh, she's mad. You know, she's mad. But mm. then I showed the whole entire birth sequence and uh, she's looking down and then she looks up past the camera. So it looks like she's looking at the camera. But yeah, I don't I'm not fully sure that she was looking at the camera. And then she like starts smiling next to the guy because the guy's laughing at her hair going all over the place as well. Yeah. So yeah, just a fun little moment that no, it's very, people decided it was... to uh, inject a lot of their kind of interpretation of it. And mm -hmm. I think that's cool. Yeah, no, and and everything can be left up to a debate as well, especially if it's just based off one image. So I think it was good to share. Um, cutting into street photography, how did you sort of um, gravitate towards that particular style of photography? Uh, when you first pick up a camera, like I think it's very difficult to know what you love shooting, so you have to shoot mm. everything. And yep. I think street photography... I don't need to pay, for, like, say, if I wanted to shoot a parallel, I have to go find it or buy it. Yep. Um, shoot photography, you just go out to somewhere busy and you, uh, if you like people watching, I think that's also a big uh, part of it. Mm. So wander around the city, take a bunch of photos, go home, see if I got anything, edit it. It gives me something to do, something to practice. And yep. at the same time, you need to know your camera. So you miss a lot of shots because you mess up settings and you're not fast enough and you're not paying, you're not anticipating the shot well enough. Yeah. And for sure. I'm rusty now. I'm about to go to New York in two weeks and I think I need, we'll see how it goes, but I think I need some practice. I feel like it is a bit of a muscle that you need to kind of uh, work out every now and then. So that's, that's where street photography legends are made there in New York city. That's yeah. A, that's a, that's a tough one. <laughs> that'll, that'll uh, be interesting. Also, another thing that got me into street photography, like online, there's lots of, uh, there's a few specific uh, documentaries. Vivian mm. Maya, she's one of them. And then there's another one called Everybody, Everyone Everybody street, street. Everybody street. That's the one. Yep. I think I they've made that, that free to watch. So I watched that and the photos were amazing. It's like, I'm going to go do this. And <laughs> so I Correct. went out and yeah, didn't do as well as them. But <laughs> no, I have and to start somewhere. it's, it's intimidating as well, I think, yeah. and and which most people will find at the start. And if they don't like concentration, like there's there's obviously been like moments in my photography journey as well where I've been confronted for for no real reason or like hmm. different reasons to what I was expecting. Let's say for street photography, how do yeah. you sort of approach that sort of situation when that goes down, Ben? Like, is that something that's happened to you quite often? I think in my how many 10 years maybe less mm. than 10 years of shooting i've probably been confronted like angrily maybe twice right. and uh one of them was in new york when i was using a camera with a wide lens so i was taking a photo of the was it empire state just like it was mm -hmm. a long street down the road yep. uh, one of those like yeah vanishing point ones and yep. then this lady just came up to me and she was like angry and she was like pretending to get her phone out to take photos of me it was like I, she thought that i was taking a photo of her <laughs> Right. And she was getting mad and like I was being sneaky about it, but I didn't see mm. her until she was like right in front of me and trying to mock, like, mock me. And yeah, yeah sure. but, so out of the two times, one of them wasn't even correct. If that's uh, usually yeah, people right. are pretty nice, they're yeah, like no, happy. That's yeah. good. And I think if you do it with a level of you know confidence, but also a level of yeah, not in a way that. I guess makes them a bit more fearful. I think people pick up on your energy too, right? As yeah. a photographer. Yeah, I think like 
if you think that you're doing something wrong, then as soon as they look at you or catch you doing it, you're going to panic and you're like, oh, try to run away or put the camera down mm -hmm. or whatever. I think like, yep. I'm not trying to post ugly photos of people. I try to make them look as great. Like if they look bad or whatever, I just won't post it. So I think those are my, I know my intentions, so mm -hmm. I don't have anything on my conscience. And like when they look, they'll look at you when you're taking a photo of them sometimes, right? And like, I think the worst thing you can do is pull your camera down and act yep. like you got caught because yep. you're not doing anything wrong. Um, depends no. on what country, but like public photos are, you're allowed to shoot photos in public. Mm. Absolutely. Um, some of your tips with street photography, I know you've put them up before, but if you want to give us a couple just quickly that you, first for any budding street photographer or someone who wants to get into street photography after seeing your work, could you give me some main tips maybe that will help along the way? Yeah, um, I think when I get this a lot, like people like, how, mm. um, if it's, I want to shoot it, but I'm not scared. So I think yep. one of the first things you can do is like uh, find another street photographer friend and go and shoot with them. I think it's yep. m maybe not too many, two or three. Um, when it gets a bit too large, the group, it's like you kind of run the street and everyone can see what you're doing. But mm. uh, one or two friends, it, you have that confidence and if anything does happen, you have a friend with you. But I think that helped a lot. I shot with a lot of friends in Sydney. So that kind of got me out of that scared to shoot alone thing. But yep. another thing is uh, know that you're not doing anything wrong. Um, don't mm. do anything wrong. Don't try and... I don't like when people take photos of like the homeless or the vulnerable because I feel like those mm. are like cheap shots, I guess. So like, no, go zones for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're documenting stuff. That's up to you what you think. But I personally don't do it. So... I just shoot uh, photos that I think uh, look good and tell a story. And because yep. of that, I know that I'm not doing anything wrong. So I have that confidence. So if I'm shooting, for example, a, a human subject and they look at me, usually I won't pull the camera down. I'll just keep shooting. And uh, they usually think that I'm shooting at something past them. So they'll just carry on about their day. Or yep. when I do have a delay, uh, when I pull the camera down, I'll just like look past them and keep walking. And usually they, they don't even notice. Yeah, cool. But, no, I, I think they're really good points as well. And camera settings, what would you normally, um, what's your go-to settings? Do you like a, an aperture priority mode? Do you like to yeah. uh, like a, a uh, shutter speed priority? Everyone tells you to shoot manual, but I think street photography, like, I always shoot aperture priority. So okay, I you need to remember to not always shoot wide open because then all your photos kind of look the same. But yep. I like to set it to an aperture for whatever I'm shooting and let the camera decide um, aperture priority. And if it's too bright, the scene that I'm shooting, I'll use the exposure um, compensation and I can dial it down or up. So yeah. that will kind of uh, tell the camera what uh, range I'm looking for in terms of exposure. That's a good way to do it for sure. Um, I've, I find uh, auto ISO in cameras can be pretty effective as well. Yeah. Um, another way to, to, try and balance it out without going too overboard with ISO or things like that. And I usually say maybe one one twenty fifth of a second is roughly probably a good shutter speed aim, but you're right with, with aperture priority. I think that helps a lot too. You can tell your camera, like, do you want it on the faster shutter side or do you want it on the slower shutter side? So mm. I don't really like having motion blur, like specifically in, in uh, street photography. So I'll try right. to make it a bit faster. Yep. Um, I want to catch... Have, everything kind of sharp and there are times when i shoot slow shutter but that's on purpose and then i'll put it to shutter priority instead of aperture priority but yeah sure that, yeah sharp photos um sometimes it's and, dark and you don't want to push the iso so you for street photography you have to work with the light that you're you're given i guess so mm. try to find uh, natural light sources like vending machines uh, street lamps good point very good point and and i guess the other question that i had is Developing the eye for street photography, that's something that, you know, gets talked about a little bit um, with a lot of the masters that used to do it um, for a long time. Um, how do you find you can build that up and, and, and see those moments as they're happening? Um, is that something that you've kind of developed or is that something you look for as a plan? How do you sort of come up with some of the shots you're doing for your street photography and how do you develop that eye? I think this is pretty personal. So I think mm. my street photography is everything that I look for. So it says more about me than I would say it says about the subject. So sure. I'll go out and whatever's interesting to me, 
I think it's intuitive now that I shot street photography so many times. Uh, so over the years that like I instinctually know what I'm looking for. So I guess for beginners, you would look for things like uh, if you're in New York, like the yellow cabs or like uh, in Hong Kong, you have the red cabs, you have umbrellas, you have people yep. crossing the street. Like those are like kind of easy to photograph motifs to start off with. But mm. eventually you will figure out exactly what interests you in photography, uh, street photography, sorry. Um, I can show you a whole bunch of street uh, photos later on, but yep. yeah, I, I would say it would be instinctual and um, just experience and shooting it over and over, you'll find out what you what draws you to a certain scene or subject. Mm. Good point. And the thing we touched on earlier when we spoke is choosing the right focal lengths as well because they can change yeah. the whole perspective on street photography. Now, I, I think you've got some videos on that if you yep. wanted to share or did you want to share that a bit later? Completely up to you. Uh, I can show you. So I made a whole bit like a, a real and TikTok series of like uh, what the camera is, uh, sorry, the lens and then the photos mm. that I shot with it. So people yep. always ask like, oh, which lens should I get? I, I have no idea what you like to shoot. But here are some examples of uh, the types of images you can get with this lens. So um, cool. you can check the videos out on my Instagram. But uh, I think I need to share, share my again. screen. Uh, give me one second. So no, that's all good. So that um, Instagram handle for anyone that looking to check it out, uh, it's uh, at each band yep. as well um, for both uh, YouTube, um, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and um, everything else basically as well. So It's meant to be Ichiban, so uh, like number one in Japan, but I had to spell it wonky so I could get the username across everything. So uh, <laughs> Nice, that's the origins. There yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no real deep meaning. All right, so. Cool. Um, right. Someone actually Perfect. stole my username on TikTok and I had to kind of get it somehow. <laughs> so really? they're on it already. But Jeez. Uh, can you see my desktop? Yep. Sweet. Perfect. It's right, coming so up now. I've got a bunch of, I'll show you just quickly. I'll turn the sound off. Um, all right. So this is the 16 to 35, which I use a lot for, it's always on my camera because of vlogging. Um, yep. So wide lens, everyone needs wide lens. Uh, if you watch the whole reel, they're on my Instagram. You can, I wrote a whole bunch of uh, the pros of the lens. Yep. But basically, it shoots a lot wide. Uh, fortunately, this guy closed his shop last week. He was a legend in Tokyo. Oh, but uh, everyone shoots this because there's so much going on. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to get this shot without a wide lens. And to be honest, I don't think I was wide enough. Um, I have mm. a friend, Demis. He shoots in 14 a lot. And... It looks right. a lot more kind of amazing, but uh, it's not too bad. It's ultra wide. Um, yeah, this is out the back of a monorail, I would say, in, in Tokyo that goes over yeah, Rainbow cool. Bridge. And yep. you're quite close. So a wide lens will exaggerate all the, the lines. Beautiful. Uh, like you see, that's a slow drag shutter shot. And yeah, this, is, this was over Antarctica. I shot uh, Sembalashi. So it was a solar halo. I was pretty amazed when I saw it. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone else was like drinking on the plane and didn't see it. <laughs> um, could only get this shot with a wide lens because uh, it was the size of, of a planet, um, if I could wow. describe it. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Mm, but, epic. Uh, another wide shot just under the bridge, Sydney Harbour. And yeah, a minimalist shot with my friend Pat K just standing in the snow. Beautiful. But I think those... This series, I can show you uh, on the other end. So my longest mm. lens, 70 to 200. Um, this, for those of you who aren't familiar with lenses, right? They it compresses the scene. So yeah. it basically will push the background all the way forward. So uh, this was in what was this Death Valley, California. So there were lots of layers. Um, mm. There are mountains and sand dunes, and I climbed a long, oh, long way to get this shot. But yeah. Um, it compresses seen, the background. I, so. I've seen in your vlogs, um, especially in <laughs> New Zealand, you did a bit of walking and a bit of hiking there. It looked like a bit of tough work. Oh, man, like New Zealand, it, I went on Hooker, Hooker Valley track and it's rated mm. the easiest the easiest hike in New Zealand. <laughs> so <laughs> it was hard because I had to keep on walking back in front of the camera and there were yeah. people and I, I'd run back to my camera just out of embarrassment. But um, yeah, for sure. Made the hike a bit longer. But yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I think at one point you said, I'm tired. Oh, yeah, because I had <laughs> run back and forth for selfie three times because I messed up the composition and it was like a five to 10 minute walk. And Jeez. yeah, <laughs> that was at the end of the hike. But uh, this wow. is like a street photo. So it's a long subway metro station in Tokyo. So as you can see, the longer focal length will compress, um, gives you a pretty crazy background. Mm. And because there's so much depth, you get crazy depth of field as well at 2.8. It's a it's the good lenses to use if the background's quite busy as well. I assume. Yeah, um, it's a specialty lens. I think I see an image. Oh, this is a seventy two hundred shot. I'll use it, and then mm -hmm. I'll try to ditch the lens as soon as I can because it's so heavy. Uh, whenever I'm road tripping, the lens is sitting in the back of it, like back seat of the car, and never yep. in my camera bag. <laughs> but uh, this is another example of uh, how it's compressing the glacier all the way forward. So yep. all you see is glacier. So. Great specialty lens. You can get details yeah. as well. Mm. Yeah, so this is in Kyoto. And I think that's my friend Tim there, but I tried to blur him out as much as I could because he was shooting the other way. But Beautiful. yeah, man. Uh, nice. Lenses, for those who want to buy lenses, I don't know. Like, It depends on what you shoot. I always get mm. asked this question. It's like, what should I buy? It's like, whatever mm. you can afford and whatever you want to shoot, basically. So, Good point. Good point. Check that series out if you want to check out what type of images you can achieve. Yeah, I think there's some really epic um, shots in there and I think it explains it really well what the pros are for each lens as well, which is, yeah. is really important because focal length, especially for street photography, obviously travel stuff as well um, has its own place in what lens you choose. Is that something, do you take the whole bag um, of lenses out when you typically oh. shoot? How does What is a typical uh, I session would like to look take like? I'm trying to kind of, I wish I could just go out with one camera and one lens, but <laughs> I'll get there. I'm like, oh, I wish I had this lens. So yeah, I shoot with sure. an 85 and there are a lot of cases where I see some, a scene in front of me, but I know straight away that she's like two arms lengths away. She, she's yep. too close. If I yep. went to shoot a photo of her or him with an 85 mil, I'd probably just get like a tied up, uh, tight shot of their head, mm. which is not the scene that I saw. But yeah, sure. you just have to watch those like uh, photos potential photos walk by and go by you but i think you with prime lenses uh so non-zoom lenses yep. you have to kind of have uh experience with it to know the distance that you need to be from the thing that you're taking the photo of so a 35 you can wander through a tight market and shoot lots mm -hmm. of photos that yep. you can get pretty close with a 35 um 85 you need to be i don't know maybe like across the street almost yeah, maybe a bit closer sure. but this all comes instinctual. So like you've shot enough with the 85 that you know how, what the profile is. And yep. yeah, and, there are certain looks. Yeah, for sure. And I think another good point as well with the lenses is the wider it is, the closer you have to go in. And for yeah. street photography, that can be daunting to a lot of people as well. Uh, like there's a, so there's a zone focusing mode. So you set it. So it's infinite focus at, uh, I think it's like, 5.6 or 8 or whatever. So I don't even need to wait for it to hit uh, autofocus because I know that if they're two arm lengths away from me, they'll be in focus. So I shot a lot um, in Tokyo. In I think I have a video on my YouTube about it. Whereas like it's that style where you don't even have to look through the viewfinder. You can just like yeah, uh, sure. take a photo. And yep. I feel like that helps when you're walking through a tight. Uh, you don't have to like take a photo subject. You can just pick it up, click it, and keep going. Yep. So uh look up zone focusing if you want to try and shoot some closer up things of uh close up street of subjects i think that helps that's a cool lot. that's a really good point as well a lot of film photographers apply that um on their lenses because their lenses actually have how far away based on what aperture and things like that so it's all it's basically like a a lot of Leica users out there apply that zone focusing. they, they know it. instinctually like how far to move their focusing finger or like to if they want something closer, like mm. say if they've set it to two, two feet away, if yep. the subject comes close, they know exactly how far to push the, the focus ring to, to get them. And I'm not at that stage, but <laughs> it's pretty, it's um, pretty impressive to, to witness as well. Um, like now, the, the modern cameras can shoot uh, autofocus really well. Um, mm. So, but the issue with that is that if you're walking through a crowded place, it doesn't know which face to pick. So yeah, that's an sure. issue. So that's why. Zone are you, are you a, a, um, an eye detection guy now, or are you still using uh, eye detection point? right now? It's got me. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, for vlogging, I just actually straight up. Um, sure. For everything else, I like to have more control, especially when I'm behind the camera. Uh, sometimes it'll pick up something that you don't want it to, and then it will ruin the shot. So I yeah. like to control it as much as I can if I'm behind yeah, the cool. camera. Yep. And and nowadays with the obviously the hybrid systems as well and what makes an, a camera like the R5 so great is the ability to switch from photos to video. Yeah. How do you find doing that setup? Is it like, do you go in with a video in mind or do you go in with stills and just kind of switch halfway through and, and capture a certain moment? How does that work for you? Now with social media, you need to take the photo you need to okay. take a video of the scene. You need a BTS of you taking the photo. So it's like, <laughs> it's crazy now, but I'm pretty good at it. I've been doing it for a while. Since Tasmania, I was practicing flipping from video to photo. So yep. I'll shoot a whole bunch of photos. Uh, a tip for that to get coverage would be to tight, medium, and close. Uh, sorry, and wide, sorry. Yep. So you have three variations. And then yep. once I think I'm kind of done, I'll switch over to video, get some video, and... I think that's saved me. Um, I have lots of video footage, which a lot of photographer photographers they mm. don't like. They don't have it, and for sure. I I can use it for stock image, uh, stock footage. Sorry, or I can like chuck it in uh, other other video projects. And yep. I quite often use old footage uh, of locations that I've been to. It's yeah, handy. great, awesome. Good point. Thank you um, for sharing. Um, now let's talk a bit about your travel. Uh, photography and videography where did the passion come from uh in regards to that because that's kind of different to again obviously you're applying a bit of the street photography but now you're doing it i yeah. guess a bit more video with your vlogging series as well yeah uh, i went to japan uh 2019 i was like hey i'm i'm gonna try and vlog because i need to get better in front of the camera um yep it's so weird talking to a lens and you can see yourself in the reflection so it's like Mm. What am I doing in my life? <laughs> but eventually you get over it. Uh, I have a podcast with my friend Dennis, 529 Podcast. Um, okay. That started off as a way to kind of ease me into video. So we filmed the whole thing and then we'd yeah. have to sit there and edit and listening to your own voice for four hours. Like mm. it's terrible at the start, but you get over it. Like you just numb yourself to it. But okay. I kind of forced myself to vlog and I would say it's one of the best decisions I made because... We had a lot of time in the last two years. And just for me, I go back and watch them all the time because they're good times. And even if no one else saw those videos, uh, I would say it was still worth it because it's like a visual diary. Like I like photos, but they just don't capture moments like a vlog would. So yeah, definitely. That was, um, yeah. So that kind of pushed me into doing more video. And yep. because of my street background, I like shooting candid stuff and street stuff mm. and I've tried to mix that in with my um, videography, vlogs, and photography. So yep. that's my style. Nice. Um, and I think you, I think you do it really well. Like you, you not only play out the video, but you'll do the pictures in between. You'll do yep. um, the reels as well. And there's like, <laughs> and you'll explain your process too, which is what I do appreciate um, yeah. out, out of you, Ben. I, I believe you're quite. Um, you pass yeah. on your tips. You don't. You don't keep them all to yourself, which I really appreciate. I think, or well, one of the the ways to mastery of any kind of skill is being able to explain it in a simple way to someone else. So mm. I I like sharing. People ask a lot of questions, and it's like I'll share. Like, what's they're never going to take the same photo as me. Like, it's a unique perspective. So I don't have anything yep. to lose by sharing my tips, and no. I want them to improve, and I want to see their work. So yeah, really cool. Is, Definitely, yeah, you should share your tips. I think providing value, especially on Instagram, YouTube, that's a big way to get engagement, get a uh, build a community. So definitely give it a go. I think that's very important. And and you've recently, uh, we've talked about it before, but you found yep. new ways to share your photography and, and um, your videos. And you do more animated graphics now as well, which is something that's pretty cool and different to or unique to yourself. Yeah, um, that started off as a project. Uh, I was, I wanted to spice it up, I guess. So mm. I, the whole world's moving towards video and I wanted to see if I could find a kind of mixed media um, intermediary. So yep. I've taken a photo. I can show you how, how's that. Um, yeah, let's bring up some photos it. as well. So I've animated this from a still photo. If, 
Uh, I'm sure everyone that follows me has seen this like a thousand times, right? But yeah, um, I'm um, it. Um, yeah, it's so great. This started off as a photo. So I can show you the original photo. Um, still photograph. It's just like, Beautiful. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the subject I chose specifically because there's lots of lights because I, I knew I could work on it. And yep. basically what I did, uh, a lot of people, people have asked me how I do this. Um, it's painting pretty much. I, so when you're editing in Lightroom, this is Lightroom yep. Classic, by the way, there's mm -hmm. a adjustment brush. Um, so these aren't even all the layers that I've done. I think you need a, a powerful computer. Um, but I'll turn it on and off. So that I've painted this. And what I've done is basically, oh, you can see all my settings. So lower mm -hmm. the exposure, lower the highlights, trying to turn the light off pretty much, right? So lower the yep. whites, yep. Uh, lower the clarity to kind of soften it a bit. And another thing was uh, to desaturate it because when lights off, there's no color. Um, mm -hmm. That's a huge tip, I think, because even if it's dark, it still will have a tint of like the original color. So right. when you're trying to turn the light off, you should definitely uh, desaturate it a little bit. And I've made it a bit cooler as well. But I've individually uh, painted out every single one of these lights. <laughs> it's therapeutic, but it takes forever and it might sure. blow your computer up, I think, like, <laughs> by the end of it. But um. Yeah, so that's one section. Uh, what's the big one? I'm turning on and off. You can see it's subtle, but like there's right here. Yeah, wow. There's like, I've used a lot of layers, but um, basically I've done that and then I've taken it into a video program. And because I have all the separate layers of each light, I can mm. animate each section. And I'll show you how it looks for those who haven't seen it yet. But. Um, I wanted to flicker. I've done the whole sound thing. I'll put it up a bit. Took a long time. I'm quite proud of this one. <laughs> but that's, pretty, pretty that's essentially how I did it. Uh, manual labor and just like painting out each section and then reanimating it for, for everything to turn on. But, and then after all that, you've still got people saying, oh, you, you know. <laughs> This, this isn't real. This isn't a real scene. You've created all this, but you've actually basically hand painted it to some degree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what to call it. I've, <laughs> I feel it, it's a disservice to, to animators to call it an animation. So I, I don't know what it is, man. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, yeah, I think, it, I think it's very, very impressive. And you've done that for a couple now. Um, yeah, it might as well be a series at this point. So this is a phone shot I randomly took of like a, I think. It's a building surrounded by two massive ones. So I thought that was quite interesting. And yep. I essentially painted it out as well. And I put a little uh, no face in there. You can see he's just hopping around. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there's, very, a, very there's cool. a Prada one. And I'm trying to do more. So I built a whole collection of these. But yeah. Man. And this, um, um, the, the Prada one as well, um, my colleague was we were looking at it together. And he's like, surely that's not a real place. Oh, yeah, it's so it's an art installation done mm. by two dudes. Um, it really is in the middle of nowhere. So I was On going Google out Maps, to, both directions, yeah, yeah. nothing. For at least, I think, 45 minute drives at like 100 kilometers an hour each way. There's no one. But there's security cameras there because people do vandalize it. And uh, from what I've researched on Wikipedia, in the actual mm. part of so it's real um, hand-picked uh, items by the Prada creative director, whoever. Wow. So they decided to do donate to this art installation to have real products in there. And I think there's only one shoe, like the left shoe. So it's like, if you still <laughs> you're kind of <laughs> don't have the complete set, right? But um, true, true. yeah, that's yeah. one of the places I came across randomly uh, on my travels. And yeah, very, very, very cool. Um, touching on your, your travel photography, um, how do you sort of plan what you're going to do before you leave is do you make sort of a list of places um, that are popular? Cause obviously this is a thing when you go yeah. anywhere and you would research that area, they're going to give you the seven, 10 areas to go to, but they're so yeah. bombarded with tourists. How do you find your, I guess your little secret spots to, to, to go and photograph or video? Um, so I'm actually in the like stage of planning Japan right now. Um, okay, I'm going there perfect. for almost two months, but yep. the, it's a bit tough for this time because I've been there so many times. So it's like, I've done mm. all these things. What do I want to do next? But sure. if it's a new location, you go on Instagram 
you go on Google, you go on Pinterest, uh, Tumblr, uh, even just sometimes Google Maps, you can like see what this, like you go into the satellite view, satellite view, sorry, and you can yep. see the general landscape. Um, that's very handy for drone photography. So like I found sites where it's like uh, in my New Zealand thing, I was New Zealand trip, sorry. I was looking for places to go shoot and I went to the satellite view and just looking around the local area and that's how I found a glacial runoff. But yep. That helps a lot. Um, and then if you're trying to find exact locations, I guess try to reach out to people. Maybe they can help mm. you. Maybe you can you can reverse image search on Google. That's a that's a very okay. uh, yeah, a good tip that not many people know. So Jeez, screenshot okay. it, save it on yep. your computer, and then when you open Google, there'll be an image thing. You click it and then you drag the image and you upload it to Google. And then Google mm. will return all the results that uh that match that image and you can usually find an article that says where it is or yeah so yeah. a lot of different right. ways to plan where to go and i save in folders so on tiktok i have a folder of places i want to go uh yep. instagram as well and mm -hmm. put them all yeah, on a map and then plan your trip pretty much amazing that's a that's a really good there's some really good tips there um i've got a question in, um from valley um, the last question hey, on there, D. Um, question for Ben. Dear Benjamin, I want to start solo travel photography. <laughs> what is the best advice you could say about solo traveling photography? That's a, that's uh, a, it's a tough question to answer, but if you had some quick tips for Veli, Ben. Hey, how are you going, first of all? Um, <laughs> I think it's... So there are a lot of things that, uh, I guess, are stopping a few like, people from going on trips. Saving mm. money. Like everyone's in a different situation, but if you really want to go somewhere, I think you can, even if it takes you three years of saving, like you have to know that you want to go and you commit and just put the plans into motion. But yep. uh, let's just say you have your finances handled, mm -hmm. go solo traveling, um, New Zealand. I did in April, which is my first kind of solo travel for a nature destination. And that was a new, you have to do everything. And like, it was such a strange experience of me being mm. in the field and, I, I knew that I hadn't seen a human being for at least an hour each way. So <laughs> it was fine. It was, it's a strange experience. Therapeutic. But yeah, a bit creepy. Like if it got dark and I got stuck. <laughs> I feel like I wasn't as adventurous because I was alone. And um, yeah, but I think just do it. Like you get to do exactly what you want for solo travel. Yeah. It's a bit of a burden also because like, what do I yeah. eat today? For like lunch, yeah. breakfast, and dinner. <laughs> um, Gatorade and um, a sandwich. Yeah, I ate so many sandwiches in New Zealand because you'd go to, I think they call it Countdown, but where we got Woolies, right? It's the same right. brand. And yeah, just yeah. buy a roast chicken, shove it onto bread and wrap it up nice. and you're good to go. But know that you want to go on a trip and just commit to it. I think that's the, that's the goal. Nice. Um, I've got another question too, Ben, quickly. Um, hey, Ben, how important is having a good computer? My <laughs> old computer struggles a bit and I want to do more cinematic stuff. All right. So his name is Julian. Um, he, he was the guy that I got to model those hoodies like at the very first uh, start of my career. But he's in, right. uh, where is it? He's in I think you need Madrid to help him now. out with a, a computer <laughs> then, Ben. Yeah, he's trying to get me to do donate an old computer to him. But, yeah, sounds like it. Uh, I, I think... Having a computer helps specifically if you're doing video editing, but uh, there are a lot of options out there now. So mm. I think there are some browser video editors you can even do now. Um, if you have a phone, that's more than enough to edit photos on. Uh, yep. Yeah, there's Lightroom on mobile. So you just have excuses, basically, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> Work harder, nice. man. Yeah. Yep. Called out. Nice. Um, I've got Kent here as well. He says, hello, Ben, big fan, love your work. What's your favorite photograph memory to date? Uh, I would say uh, if you want to share my screen. Mm. Yeah, let's, let's on, that, on that point. Perfect. And, yeah, what, so, and what, why is this your favorite memory, Ben? Uh, I think it's a, a unique moment that I, I shot this 2019, so my last Japan trip, and I saw them walking towards this light and it was slippery, mm. very slippery because I, I had just hiking boots on and like the, the road had, had glassed over basically and I was running yep. and I filmed this as well. So you can see me running. I have a GoPro on my chest mount. So 
I think I've shared this on Reels and TikTok as well, but yeah, I wow. got there just in time with the 85, so it was just the right distance that I didn't need to crop or whatever. And mm-hmm. it's just a, feels like a core memory for that child. So I, I would I like think to think, uh, yeah, inject myself into it. And it's beautiful. Who doesn't like snakes? I think it's great. I think it's very wholesome. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll, we will touch on some more photos. So if you keep that open, um, I've just got one other question come through. You've already smashed the, the, the question record for our show, Ben, so you're killing it. Go um, so I've got Dylan Allen. The way Instagram is currently, it seems to be super hard to get traction organically, whether it's photos or reels. Do you find hashtags actually make a difference? Uh, I think if you're referring to photos, I think it's difficult overall. Mm. Um, they've been under fire a lot for like abandoning photographers and like as a business, I see where Instagram's at. The boss has to react to the the data that he sees of like, what are people reacting to? And like, he sees more than we do. So I know Mm. for a fact that everyone says they love photos, but when they get shown a video, they like interact with them more. It's just, it's just the way it is. But that being said, um, hashtags i don't think it helps i think like Mm. your best bet i think right now is the best time for a new creator like it's the best time ever because i know a few creators that have come up out of nowhere they've blown up their accounts to like two hundred thousand in like a month and Mm. that's due to reels so you're right you might hate reels i think lean into it uh it's your best bet of growing your social accounts uh to date like since i've been doing this for 10 years there hasn't been a better opportunity for newcomers than now. Like it took me like years to get to like a thousand likes. And like, that was a milestone for me. Whereas on uh, reels and TikTok, you can just post anything. And like, mm. I've got stuff on like 500,000 likes. I have a comment yeah. on 500,000 likes on TikTok. So it's like, <laughs> this is You've the time to, yeah, this is the time to double down. If you're a new creator, I think um, Missouri. So Instagram CEO has come out and said this, they they're going to focus on smaller creators and not so much neglect big accounts. Mm. They are, they are, Mm, I I take the fact they are, but they're going to try and get the new accounts to stay on, to use it. I think that's where the growth is. And yeah, don't be discouraged. Make some reels. I think you can uh, use reels and video as a vehicle to show your photography. So Mm. I've done it a lot. Um, There are trends, like I did an album cover trend where it just jumps through like a, it's like a music player, but there's like the album art. And instead of an album art, I'll chuck my photo there. So it's a video, but it's showcasing my photography. And there's some very cool reels um, that you've done on. Thanks. Well, and, and I guess another way to answer that question uh, in a real format, like you've said, is just feature your photos in a reel. Um, yeah. Just that's, I'm, I mean, that's, I've seen that's some of the way you've done it as well, even showing your editing tricks or tips in a, in a mm. short video. Yeah. You don't, I don't think you have to stick with just reels. Like once mm. you gain traction, I've seen uh, the people that I mentioned that have blown up like 200,000 or whatever, because they have so much momentum when they do post photos, it does well too, because Instagram's pushing all their content. And yeah, yeah, like a lot of people shudder when they talk, you talk about reels, like, and TikTok, mm. Mm. they're like, oh, I'll never do that. But it's the best time to be doing it. And it can help you, especially if you're a small account. So yeah, give it a go. Absolutely. Great. Really good points, Ben. Now, if you want to share some photos, I know you've got some up there as well. And and talk us through some of the, some of your favorite photos. Uh, I've got a lot. So um, yeah. I don't share a lot of Sydney photography. Do you? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're from Brisbane, so I guess you wouldn't know where this is. But this is one of my earlier, if you can see the date. 2016 so it wow. actually got used as an album car, uh, album art for Munica it's a pretty good album too um, nice. French producer but this is another one um, just random Sydney shots that I've taken that I don't share quite often enough but yeah uh, I shoot everything so I have I shoot film digital drone mm-hmm. I'm into FPV now so it's like another thing to play with but yeah, uh, I, I mean, I saw a lot of those in your vlog. I believe it was for the New Zealand trip as well. Is that FP, a lot of FPV stuff? Yeah, I'm new at it. So mm. it's a struggle getting usable footage, but um, yep. it's very fun. When I fly a normal sick. drone now, it's like, uh, it's this is boring. <laughs> so that's the stage I'm at. But um, yeah, lots of travel, I guess. Uh, Shanghai. Mm. I don't think, uh, yeah, we can go there just quite yet. But uh, you got Grand Canyon. 
Yep. Pretty amazing lights. Uh, yep. Where is this? I'll give you. Do you, do you know where this is? This is an Australian location. I'll let you guess. No? I'll say Victoria. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Blackstar. You got it. Yeah. Nice. I'll take that. Uh, shoot a lot of streets in uh, New York. I caught this one. I was standing on a street corner as the cab was coming around and just I caught it. And I like that she, she has a, it looks like she has a story. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, with the boys on a road trip. So I saw the video for this. This is good. <laughs> this is yeah. good real. Yeah. Shout out to Jam Tuna. He drove all wonky to get the, uh, the long nice. exposure trail. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've shot a lot too. So here's some commercial work, I guess. So we shot the e-tron. It was the first in Australia. Me and two other photographers, Demis and Jonah. And yeah, we're quite uh, fortunate to get our hands on it. And this is just so is this, is this what you're doing when you're not doing your sort of travel yeah. kind of things? Like, is this is this your day to day photography? Yeah. So I work a lot with uh, Demis. We do a lot of mm. gigs together. So we shot this uh, Audi for an example. And yep. I think last year we shot Pokemon. We shot a video for Pokemon. So that was yeah, fun. Yeah. Right. It's random. Whatever request we get, we would do. Yep. Yep. Another request was Antarctica. So I didn't land there. Every time I say mm. Antarctica to people, they're like, oh my God, but I was in a plane that circled around and came back. <laughs> nice. But did you know Antarctica is only four hours from Sydney? I feel like I've been lied to my whole life. And did not know that. <laughs> it is. <so. laughs> you see ice uh, caps and everything. But uh, another kind of random job. I was happy to be in a plane after so many years, right? But Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, and been... now that now that everything's starting to open up back again, obviously you've got Japan plan, which is mm-hmm. obviously going to be huge for you. You were saying you were taking a lot of your group over as well, who do that kind yeah, of almost like a creative my whole team, group chats. They? Yeah, oh, they are photographers too, so that helps. Mm. But almost the whole group chat's going. So it's like uh, it helps that it was like in the Christmas break or whatever. But yep. I'm pretty keen to get back out there uh like this whole the last two years i haven't upgraded any of my gear because it's like i'm not going anywhere but like yeah, sure. in the past month i've changed everything out i'm selling a whole bunch of things and everything right. is upgraded and ready to go yeah nice keen for it yeah cool man and and i think that that'll be really exciting and as you were saying before to me that that just kind of sets you up and getting mm. like your videos getting your stills and and then you can sort of drip um, them through whenever you like on your various social channels, which is cool. I'll be in um, Japan for the next five years from after this. Yeah, trip. <laughs> exactly. You'll be getting questions of people yeah. asking you stuff that Japan related. You'll be back home. <laughs> um, now your inspiration as well. Where do you find a lot of your inspiration comes from, um, Ben? So that's like, do you find there's particular accounts? Like I was on, there's a YouTuber called Joe Allen. I was on his, ah, uh, one yeah, of his, too. Yeah, one of his videos the other day, I saw a comment from you. Is that is that someone that you've linked up with or is that an inspiration? And how do you how do you find uh, inspi- inspiration for your trips? Yeah, so Joe, he's he vlogs or he did used to make travel vlogs. Um, I mm-hmm. met him because we both work with Adobe and they've sent us to LA a bunch of times. So yeah, I've cool. met him and uh, I, I think for YouTubers, they inspired me to vlog like I think if you asked me 10 years ago, would I be vlogging? I was like, mm. I would never be in front of a camera. But yep. because of uh, people like Joe and also the standard Casey Neistat, which he's vlogging again. So yeah, <laughs> that's I'll inspired that. me to, to get going again. And okay. I can't wait to vlog. That's where mm-hmm. the New Zealand vlogs came from. So just to document my life pretty much. Yeah, cool. And and the reels as such, like are you getting a certain type of inspiration to develop your reels? Because the creative process can be a tricky one, especially if you have you might yeah. be in, in during a creative block. How do you find um, you have the inspiration for some of your ideas for your reels as well? I save videos, like I said. So I have a folder of uh, stuff that I want to reshare, for example, to stories. I share a lot of TikToks and that. But I also yep. save stuff that I potentially want to remake. So um Trends, I guess, are big on Reels and TikTok. So, mm. like, you jump on and you follow the format. But also, yep. sometimes I'll save stuff. Like, I won't follow the trend, but it's an idea that I can maybe plug into something. I'll figure it out later. So, when I don't know what to do, I'll go to that folder and look. Um, music also is a big inspiration. So, I'll save sounds and yep. stuff to edit to. And nice. Yeah, I spend a lot of time with TikTok, admittedly. So, 
Okay. Uh, that's where my inspiration would come from these days. Great. Awesome. Um, really good points as well um, on that, on, on those subjects too. Um, I guess going forward, so you've got some trips planned, but everything, probably people look at your, your work and say, oh, you, you're living the dream, your life must be awesome, you're traveling all the time. But obviously the reality can be quite different um, and you obviously spend a lot of time editing as well. Um, yeah. Do you have any advice for people that want to follow in your footsteps and probably seeing the things you're doing, getting a lot of envy, but there's obviously a lot of hard work there as well. There's so much hard work. Um, mm. I did a job once where I was on a tour bus of like other people who were just on the tour and they were annoyed at the, at the start because they, they saw that I was getting free stuff from the tour because I was working for them. So sure. towards uh, like after day 20, they're like, okay, we see that you haven't slept and you've been working like every single uh, other hour while we've been yeah. partying. So they figured yeah, it out. Right. It's a lot of hard work. I think you just have to love doing it. Um, mm. That's the simplest thing. So I like editing photos. I do it in my free time. I would yep. say it's my hobby, but it's also my yep. job. So yep. yeah, let's keep at it. Okay. It takes persistence. Don't take one photo or make one video and be like, that sucks. I'm not. Like it didn't do well. I think mm. you just have to keep pushing content out until you're competent. Nice. It's really good tips. And your editing software, your go-tos, you obviously use a lot of the Adobe platforms. Yep. Uh, it's It helps because like everything's, it does everything creative, creatively that I need, but I also mm -hmm. work with them. Just um, Premiere Pro for editing, After Effects for, I'm trying to learn that for more complicated video stuff. Yep. Uh, Lightroom for photo editing and then on the mobile, like if I'm trying to edit a quick video, like I'll go to Rush, which is also Adobe. Cool. No, yeah. awesome. Um, now, obviously, socials, people getting in contact with you or following you. Um, you're obviously on Instagram, YouTube, Foundation. Um, you've got some yeah. NFTs up there. Yeah. We didn't really touch on NFTs. Bit of a sore point at the moment, so... We can come back if there if people want to know. Yeah, <laughs> and if NFTs boom again, you know I'm going to have you on. <laughs> Not right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a crypto winter right now, but um, yeah. So obviously TikTok as well. Um, yeah. Get in touch, but yeah, it's it's been an absolute pleasure, um, Ben, to have you on, and you're you're so knowledgeable, but you're so willing to share your time as well, which we really appreciate. Um, and yeah, obviously stay tuned for the the next series of vlogs and things to come from you. Yeah, the vlogs, my YouTube channel is probably like the main thing that I'll be focusing on. But then yep. you have all the satellite things, so like TikTok and Instagram and just uh, follow me everywhere <laughs> if you want to keep up. Yep, awesome. Thank you very much, Benjamin. It's been an absolute treat. Um, thank you so much for your knowledge. And uh, yeah, enjoy enjoy the traveling now. It's, everything's okay. opened up, back up again. I think that's a big one for you. I can't wait. We're back to it. So let's, <laughs> let's, <laughs> thanks for having me nice. on. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you very Bye. much. Um, perfect, guys. And that, that was Benjamin Lee. So very, very, very skilled uh, content creator um, and a guy who I know works super, super hard on a lot of the things that he does, whether it be photos or videos. He's always seems to be on his computer by the sounds of it. So he, he I don't know when he actually gets a chance to sleep. So awesome stuff from Benjamin. So our next uh, on the couch will be Jared Singh. So Jared Singh is a wedding commercial photographer, very, very skilled um, shooter in his own right, uh, 17th of October at 6 p.m. So it'll be a special time at 6 p.m. So anyone living obviously with daylight savings time, that will be 7 p.m. So thank you very much for joining us. It's been a treat. I uh, hope you learned something. And again, follow us on our socials. Uh, for everything coming up and follow Ben as well. I believe his work is outstanding. Thank you very much and have a good evening.